for. We're going to have a look at what's grabbing headlines around the world uh, in the uh, papers. Starting in the UK today, reacting to the resignation of Britain's ambassador to the European Union, Sir Ivan Rogers. That's right. It's a huge story. Let's start uh, with the front page of The Guardian talking about a Brexit row as uh, the top EU envoy steps down. Now, he wrote a scathing resignation email and he urged his colleagues in Brussels to challenge, quote, ill-founded arguments, muddled thinking, and speak truth to power. So very strong words in that email. He also made it very clear that he'd come under pressure after angering Eurosceptics at, uh, well, Downing Street, essentially, about the pitfalls of Brexit. So you can see the front page of The Independent here saying he was hounded by hostile Brexiteers. Now, British papers divided over the consequences of this. Uh, more left-wing, pro-European papers, they're all outraged, aren't they? That's right. The Guardian, uh, let's take a look at that paper, uh, says that this is a big hit to Theresa May's Brexit plans. This is not what she needed to kick 2017 off with. Uh, it's an embarrassment to the government. But pro-Brexit papers, as you can imagine, are playing down the damage. So let's take a look at The Telegraph, which was in favour uh, of Brexit. It says, look, sure, uh, he was a key uh, Brussels insider, but Sir Ivan Rogers was also steeped in the culture of an institution from which the country is seeking to extricate itself. So essentially good riddance to him. Uh, he says there's too much gloom around Brexit. He should be replaced by someone who is positive about Brexit, who speaks up for Britain and its excellent prospects outside of the EU. So you can see very divided opinions there. Let's move on to that uh, horrifying story uh, from Brazil, that uh, riot at the prison complex uh, in northern Brazil, leaving at least 56 people dead with some uh, bodies burned and decapitated. That's right. The details are really grim, and you can read all about it in the Brazilian papers. Fula de Sao Paulo, for instance, uh, reports that half of the victims were de decapitated. Uh, the paper reports that it was so unbearably violent that even rescue teams were in shock when they got to the premise. So Brazilian authorities are calling it a bloodbath. So you can see the words, they're very harsh. And the authorities in that right grew out of a fight between two of the country's biggest gangs here. That's right. You can get more details in Courier International that takes a look at this at this rivalry between two gangs. I'll try to get their, their names right. You have the Primer, Prim, Primario, uh, Comando de Capital and Comando Vermeo. So these are two of Brazil's biggest crime gangs. They're fighting for control of drug routes, but also for control in prisons. Because you can see here Courier International saying that prisons are actually under the control of these gangs. And beyond the gang war, the papers there in Brazil outrage over the lack of means within the prisons as well. That's right. O Globo reminds readers that 111 prisoners died in a similar massacre at a prison in Sao Paulo State in 1992. So this is not the first time that there have been such grim uh, scenes taking place in Brazilian prisons. The government has announced it's increasing the budget for Brazilian prisons. Uh, one thing it wants to do is install scanners, for instance, to stop weapons from getting in. But that's not enough, according to o Globo. What's needed is a coordinated effort. We need intelligence officials inside prisons. But what really needs to change is the law, uh, essentially to ensure that only criminals, violent criminals, are thrown into jail. Because as it is, Brazilian prisons are full of petty criminals and also a lot of people awaiting trial. Uh, and you can actually read more about that in Brazil 24-7, which is a, an information website that interviews a criminologist. Uh, and he really lashes out against what he calls the bestial Brazilian prison system. Uh, gangs are responsible for what happened, but so is the government for locking up people who are just awaiting trial. Let's go stateside. The opening of the 115th Congress overshadowed by this uh, embarrassing reversal on ethics oversight. That's right. That really is the big story in the U.S. today. Uh, you can see the Washington Post says it was supposed to be a triumphant morning for Republicans on Capitol Hill. Instead, it was a day of chaos. Now, just to remind you of the timing, Monday night, House Republicans voted to curtail the powers of something called the Office of Congressional Ethics. It's an independent body. Now, what's interesting is Paul Ryan, the House Speaker, was against uh, over, well, uh, this kind of uh, curtailing the power. Uh, but So when they got to work on Tuesday, Republicans who were expecting to come to work triumphantly, excuse me, uh, they were met with outrage. Even Donald Trump, president-elect, weighed in on Twitter, of course, yeah. uh, wondering <laughs> whether this was really the right priority. Now, as you can imagine, left-wing papers in the states are thrilled uh, at this coup, I guess you could say, for House Republicans. Let's take a look at the editorial of the New New York Times saying the House fires at ethics and shoots itself instead. <laughs> Pretty rough day for uh, Paul Ryan there. Flummoxed by a photo call. That's right. Now, Stuart, do you know what dabbing is? No. <laughs> dabbing is a viral <laughs> dance move. I'll try to do it. It's something like this. <laughs> well, you'll, do it again, you'll, have to, <laughs> you'll have to look <laughs> online. But it's it's, it's pop popularized by athletes, rappers, uh -huh. and embraced by teenagers. Right. And one teenager in particular has 
I grab the spotlight. This is the 17-year-old son of Kansas Congressman Robert Marshall. He thought his dad's uh, swearing-in was the perfect opportunity to dab. So this is dabbing. Uh, and Paul Ryan <laughs> didn't get it. He thought he was sneezing, and then he asked him to stop. But he, later he uh, actually tweezed, uh, tweeted about it. It was pretty funny. Let's take a look at Paul Ryan's tweet. He says, I just s finished swearing-in photos. Nearly 300 members, countless, cu cu countless cute kids, but I still don't get what dabbing is. And as for the teenager, apparently he was grounded. Oh, poor kid. That's not fair. I was wondering if you want a tissue flow. You seem to have a bit of a cold. <laughs> Do you want, oh, is that a, what you think dabbing is? a bit is? of a snuffle. Well, that's what Paul Ryan thought <laughs> yeah, as well, isn't sneezing. it? Sneezing. Flo Vilmano uh, with the papers on France 24 and